Hello everybody, this is Gregory with How I Lost Over 100 Pounds and I've kept it off for 30 plus years where there should be no hesitance in your weight loss and maintenance. Today we're going to talk about stay away from the no fat paradigm. Now before we begin, if you need help with weight loss, contact me through the Clarity FM link found here in the episode notes. Also check out my website, Naturopathic Earth, or 100 pounds off for 30 plus years. I have hundreds of articles and recipes. Check out my two books, which you can buy on Amazon. And lastly, if you appreciate my content, there is a link a PayPal. Sorry if the audio isn't the best here. I am washing clothes right now as we have to do common menial chores. So today we're going to talk about and go back in time to 1986. Now in 1986, I was 12 years old. Go, if you're new to this channel, please go to the playlist on Confessions of an Obese Child. It's 20 episode playlist where I talk about what it was like being a fat kid, why I turned to food, and some amusing and not so amusing stories of what it was like to be a fat kid and adolescent. But back then at that time, in the 80s, we were in the midst of the fat is bad revolution. So it was eat a lot of carbs and stay away from fat because fat makes you fat. Now a lot of this stemmed from Ansel Keys. Ansel Keys was a scientist and he was on the cover of Time Magazine, and he was a somewhat unctuous man. We find out that he did, he did have connections to the corn industry and was getting some subsidies and some kickbacks, but he was very influential at the time as kind of a food scientist, food pioneer, food crusader, and his essential argument was that fat was bad, fat was leading to coronary artery disease and heart attacks, all the cardiovascular problems, and that the better solution for us was to avoid fat of all types and to stick to vegetable sources. So vegetable oils, for example, and just eat a lot of grains. Now, at the time, America did not have an obesity problem. We didn't, it was a completely different time. And yes, this was the time of post-World War II where you saw that our food was being Kind of mass industrialized, you saw the growth of supermarkets, you saw markets in general uh, being slowly phased out to what we have today, which is essentially gigantic grocery conglomerations. And so definitely our food was being you know, vitiated on one level, not to the point yet where, where it is now, but in the 50s and 60s, you, you did see this mass consumerization and it did lead to, on one level, the growing obesity, but even in the 70s, we didn't have an obesity problem. That really kicked in in the 80s, 90s, and now 70% of Americans are overweight, 40% of that number are obese. So a lot of this can be attributed to keys because keys played a role, either knowingly or unknowingly, on the USDA creating the food pyramid. Now, the food pyramid, the joke on this is the food pyramid made us look like pyramids, you know, big on the bottom and then a head on top. And if you look at the food pyramid that I grew up with, it's just insane to think now that they told us to have six to 11 servings of grains. And if you look at the picture of what they think is healthy for us to eat, they have cereal. <laughs> they have cereal. <laughs> they have breads, pasta, but the cereal is mind blowing. But again, you know, there's a lot of corruption in terms of lobbying and money and so forth that these these companies every industry has a lobbyist group which are just paid whores to pay off corrupt politicians and government agencies so no doubt i mean i'm sure that the the fda and the usda knew that cereal wasn't healthy for us even if it's cornflakes but they're in there so we believed back then that you should have a lot of grains and you should use the oils of grain so corn oil canola canola is actually a portmanteau of canadian oil because the the the, the plant or the, the 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 plant that it comes from is actually called rapeseed and the, the canadian lobbyist group for the oil thought you know maybe that's not a good name for our oil to name it after it's a rapeseed right so they changed it to canola so you saw through the 80s and 90s and early knots this was normal. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, my mom, all we had at our house was fat-free jello, fat-free puddings, fat-free skim milk, fat-free Entenmann's. You remember the pastries, Entenmann's? They had a fat-free variety. You could buy fat-free cookies, fat-free, Weight, Weight Watchers used to make fat-free cookies, and everything was take out the fat, take out the fat because this was the belief. But what do you have to put in when you take out fat? Because fat makes things taste good. 
they put in sugar. So they put in tons of sugar, 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 sugar. And we know that sugar is the culprit that leads to obesity. We know that sugar is actually the culprit that leads to the cardiovascular incidences, the arthrosclerosis, the aneurysms, the heart attacks, the strokes, the, the buildup of LDL cholesterol, and all these problems. And trans fats too, trans fats are a major problem as well. So we, we, we know this now, but Ansel Keys had such an influence for so long, people would eat that. And they would think that fat is bad. So even my mom, who's still alive, God bless her, my father passed away about 12 years ago. My mom, you go to her refrigerator, it's still the same stuff. And I tell her, like, mom, you gotta drink whole fat milk. It's got less sugar and actually tastes better and you can't over drink whole fat milk as much as you can skim milk. Plus skim milk is white water. I grew up with skim milk. Skim milk was horrible. It tastes like garbage because there's no milk fat in it. It's all extra sugar. And as it is, milk does have sugar in it naturally. It's got lactose, but it just tastes like garbage. So if any of you are still in this paradigm that fat is bad, you need to get out of it because we do need to eat healthy fats. Even if you don't believe in, in what the, the USDA says about what our percentage or macronutrient profile should be, whether it be 60% carbs, 30% fat, 10% proteins, or 30% or, or protein, 10% fat, our body does need fat. Our, our cell membranes are made from cat, fat. Cholesterol is made from fat, and we, knew, we do need cholesterol for cell membranes and, and, and the, the creation of HDL and all these things like that. So we do need fat. So it's just a question of where you're getting your fat. So coconut, avocado, nuts, especially if they're not roasted in industrial grade corn oil, and, and other sources are healthy sources of fat animal products are healthy sources of fat as long as they're clean so you do need to eat fat and you do need to get off this idea of eating sugar-free or fat-free uh, puddings and jellos and all this garbage because fat doesn't make us fat fat fills us up now there are bad fats as I mentioned trans fats which are mostly found in fried foods are, are not good for us uh, and, and you don't want to be really eating saturated fats from honey buns and ding-dongs. You want to be getting your saturated fat from animal products. But most of the monounsaturated, polyunsaturated fats, these are very healthy fats that we need. You can get them from olive oil, for example. But we need to be eating fat. Fat fills us up. And, and this, so now you've seen kind of the pendulum swing where the large majority of Americans now are adhering to the opposite of what was big in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And I don't think they intuitively know this because they know that the USDA pyramid made us look like a pyramid. But I think they just seen the success and the results and that there's a lot of results to be seen from embracing a low carb diet or even something more severe like a carnivore keto kind of diet where you limit your carb total carb intake to 50 grams a day. So I think people are seeing results and that's why you see this kind of pendulum oscillate back to how about high fat, low carb. And that's not to say that I'm a proponent of a pure carnivore diet because first of all, I've talked about before, I don't think it's sustainable. I think any diet or lifestyle that tells you you have to eliminate this food for the rest of your life is not sustainable. But also we do need produce. There's gonna be certain micronutrients and not to mention fiber because you can't get fiber from, from animal products. There's gonna be certain micronutrients that you do have to get from plant-based sources. So I'm not gonna be one of those that prescribes to the complete carnivore diet, but if I had to say, like if I had to put it somewhere in the middle, I would tell you to, and this has been most successful for me, especially the last 10 years, is, is to have a more high fat, low carb profile, and moderate protein, because most of us are consuming too much protein as it is day in, day out. And unless you're lifting seven hours a day, you're probably eating too much protein as it is. So I would tell you that that the old paradigm certainly didn't work, right? No one buy the fruits, as Christ says. And the old fruit of fat is bad, sugar is good, or, or you know, carbs are good essentially, led to the obesity problem that we have today. So I would tell you, if any of you guys are still kind of adhering to the fat is bad mantra or mindset, I would really tell you that it's, it's gonna jeopardize your weight loss and weight maintenance. That being said, when I lost my weight back in 1990, 91, that was still the time where fat was bad and, and carbs were good. So I was able to lose my weight in that paradigm. So it is possible. But I would tell you with, with, with the increase of information that we have about dietary science, not to mention throwing in fasting and all these great biohacks, the best course of action in my opinion, my humble opinion, is to do more of a high fat, low carb, and of course incorporate fasting. 
Guys, post in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Hit the notification, subscribe, and share button. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.